Yo, Vaisant here. So in this video, we'll look at the January 19th update. There's a sneak peek of it in the patch notes in game. And we'll also have a video here that they posted. Um, I haven't watched this, so this will be a reaction Dark video as well. An opening all over Earth, Red. And look, another flame has been lit on the horizon. May oh. I ask what happened? Oh yeah, the Cookie Alliance. Oh, yeah. Cookie Alliance! And save the world together! I'm so glad to Oh, so this is the new cookie. I've been told that our world is standing on the precipice of war. It opens a book. And I guess they, they get a... Yeah, three of them got the... The pen mark on, the, on top of them. The rifts are only widening! Even in my wildest calculations... Calculations? I've never encountered a greater quantity! We must retreat! Still holding air. Oh! This is the, the Teen Knight cookie, right? Yeah. The fabled Teen Knight cookie and the Order's leader. Fall in line! I shall keep my own for the daily! Oh. It's like a shadow knight too. Oh, he's a charge cookie. Okay. This is my little museum. Oh, we got the guild museum. We preserve and display various artifacts and materials on cookie history. I think. I will yeah. make sure to invite you once my museum is complete. Oh. Cookies. That's the dragon that we fight in the guild boss, right? As long as the beacon shine, we fight. Ho oh, oh, ho, nice. All right, so the sneak peek notes is in the game, so we'll just go over it together. We have a new mode, Cookie Alliance, which is a seasonal game mode. So it comes and goes. It's permanent, but it comes and goes. AKA it'll be open or sometimes it'll be closed. And in order to unlock it, you need to beat 1031 in the story, and you need five teams. Five teams of five cookies. Oh my god, 25 total. I don't know if I even have that much because I started in October, but <laughs> there is a buff down there that you you will see that they talk about um, not having like them leveled up or anything. But the tickets seem to be like PvP where you get tickets over time, and then if they don't disappear, you get them, use them later for next season. And the rules might also change, so I guess you gotta keep a lookout on that. So there's several chapters on uncoming waves, so you keep going with your first team and then um, until that first team is defeated then the second team will come in etc etc so like mayhem pretty much so I guess mayhem is kind of like a, a beta for this <laughs> the battle is automatic so you can't control the skills but you can switch from team to team depending what you need right so you need like dodge something just quickly switch <laughs> just sack another team for your main team uh, but there is a cooldown though Okay, so once you switch the team, the new team will take the place of the current team automatically. I mean, in, immediately. Um, and then you can pause and exit and pick it up again where you left off. Okay, so that's a nice feature. And there's also special buffs, but it also depends. So it's kind of like, if you ever play Genshin, it's like the abyss. The blessing that, that comes in each abyss is always different depending on what the devs decide. But here's the, the Beacon of Valor. So it automatically upgrades your unit to 60, so you don't need to worry about it. But if you do have a level 60, you get this extra blast mode, right? Um, and it stays longer depending if you have more level 60 cookies. And um, apparently on our first play, we're going to get 7 days of Beacon of Valor. But we have to activate it in order to draw the effects. I don't know if it's going to cost anything or just like a button. Uh, but it says 7 days, so... Maybe just the first, you get seven days throughout the whole season, every season. So you get to pick which seven days you want. It could be like that. I don't know. I'm just reading as, I'm just assuming as I'm reading this. <laughs> All right. But then the effect will remain as long as the active is active regardless of season. Okay. Anyways, the, the points and rewards. Uh, depending on the, your, how far you get in your waves, how many monsters you defeated, and I guess total play time probably means the faster you do it, the more points you get. So, uh, number of points will be reflected on your season score after, and it also goes into individual ranking and guild ranking. Ooh, fancy. So, join a guild to have your personal store added to the guild score. So, find a nice guild, guys. <laughs> but there is also new guild content, guild domain, so we can now... We, can, we actually have an area if you saw in the video, so um, I guess we can actually decorate it now. 
And in order to do that, you need to unlock three six in the story. And then you join a guild. Each member of the guild will be able to set their favorite cookie to represent themselves. Ooh, that's nice. What I want to put as? I don't know. I know my favorite is Sea Fairy, but I would not want a Sea Fairy to represent myself. <laughs> Alright, so this, you put in the Beacon Promise, the Guild Museum, the Guild Hall. You may decorate and expand the Guild Domain. To expand the Domain, you have to spend a certain amount of resources. Uh, each Guild may will earn activity points in helping expanding. Once a new tile is unlocked, all members of the Guild will receive... Oh, mail. A reward, huh? Sugar Gnomes will help. It's not required for expanding the... <laughs> I was like, dude, are we getting Guild Sugar Gnomes? <laughs> okay. Yeah. And then you check out... The notifications you have to set, you have to turn on, it may be off or on. So, if you don't like to set notifications, you feel free to do whatever you may. And then we have domain decoration. Wait, what's the difference here? Guild domain, and then you can also domain decoration and purchase guild decors and guild shop decorate your guild's domain. Wait, do we have our own guild domain? No, it's like it's like a shared thing. <laughs> All members of the guild can purchase guild decor. However, the actual decoration can be performed by the member who was designated as the domain keeper. Okay, you need a domain keeper, huh? Initially, only the guild leader will have permission to decorate domain, and then uh, they, the officers and the guild leader will select the domain keeper among the members. The core purchased by guild members will be stored in the guild storage. If the domain keeper leaves the guild, the permission will be returned to the guild leader. Uh, the core purchase on the guild shop will only be used in the guild domain and cannot be sold. So if, if you buy within that guild, it stays in that guild. You can purchase landmarks similar to those that can be installed in your kingdom. However, these landmarks will have no effects. Uh, so a lot of the cores that you have in here probably show up up there. <laughs> guild hall, right? So now you can go to the guild hall, access information. Your cookie will be seated in the guild hall. So we actually got a, a round table kind of thing now. <laughs> interesting, interesting. Uh, beacon of Promise, your guild legendary beacon is now called the game. Oh, that's where you get your uh, your check-in stuff, right? <laughs> yeah, there you go. Level of your guild. Guild Museum uh, it consists of several halls. Hall of Magic, Hall of Nature, History, and each hall consists of several galleries. You can obtain relics to donate to the museum and place in empty spots. So I, these relics, I believe you get them in the Cookie Alliance. So once you fill the gallery with relics, all members will... Get a buff. Ooh. Legendary relic will receive an effect specific to this relic. So you have to place it to receive it. Relics can be upgraded for more powerful effects. After relic donated, all similar relics will be counted towards to level up that meter. Okay. That's cool. That's cool. Yo, actual guild content that actually like matter more <laughs> besides just getting loot at the end to pulls <laughs> and diamonds. Uh, obtaining and uh, donating relics. So relic can be tamed from Cookie Alliance, right? Oh, you can also get it from the Rainbow Shell Gallery. Nice. So the Trey Harbor, if you didn't get that, that's like the bottom left area. If you didn't unlock that yet. And they also have to own rarity. Defeating high difficulty, the waves in Cookie Alliance will increase your chances of getting a rare type of relic. Obtain relics are stored in your personal storage. They will remain until you donate them. Donating to a museum will transfer ownership of that to the guild. And then Donate relics not disappear from the gallery. The donator is kicked or leaved. So once it's in the guild, it just stays in the guild. So we have other changes. Guild level increased to 70. That's nice. And now you can't kick a member in the first 24 hours that they joined. Guild ranking details. You can check them now, I guess. <laughs> I haven't looked too much into this, but in the details, you're able to see the basic information and list of members and the relics now. Okay, okay. Nice. Also, visit the guild domain. And here are the new cookies. So, uh, apparently Eclair, which is the first cookie that you saw, you, you cast weakness debuff on three enemies. And they, so, uh, those three enemies take damage. And then they take more damage by attacks from other enemies, right? AKA your allies. And then if they're defeated, you get an HP shield, which is nice. Um, the stack duration get refresh if you use more stacks. So if you have it 10 seconds and you get another stack um, extended by eight, I guess. Yeah, this is kind of this wording is kind of weird, <laughs> but we'll we'll see when we get it. Okay. Um, so T Knight cookie, which is the second one, is a charge cookie. Wait, this one is uh, a support cookie. 
Uh, and so he gets a buff that buff his allies and it deals damage to the nearest enemies. So it seems like there's a single target. But then to get a buff and then certain conditions. It doesn't say exactly what. But it does say here when an ally is defeated, it gets this, uh, the Wrath of Commander effect is triggered. And it cannot be dispelled and it's stacked up to four times. At maximum stack, he cannot be interrupted. So he just does his own thing. <laughs> We're getting new treasures in the guild gacha. Which um, apparently heals HP to remaining cookies whenever an ally falls. And then if the last one is the one that fell, right? So it just keeps going as your cookie keeps falling. <laughs> this may be a good combo with the feather because you kind of fall and then you come back. But anyways, the last cookie will be invincible for a few seconds before the cookie falls. Um, it's still, each of them will still remain at 1% though. So we're also getting new sugar gnome technologies. So this is applied to the alliance. So now you can get buffed along in addition to your regular buffs to your alliance. Interesting. And then we have mileage shop. So now you can get cotton cookie in the store. They added some new decor in the blade of magic. They they buff cream puff cookie. Before it just does damage and then it heals. But now it can also crit. And then if it's successful, it increases skill damage and healing. And it cream puff cannot be interrupted. So some balance changes. Some mystic stuff. So now we can do 9,999 of these things. Toppings, pieces, immunity, special cutters. Uh, pretty much all cutters. <laughs> Treasure tickets, uh, time jumpers, and powders. And the gallery is going to restock with some new goods. Okay, and then you can also have a resolution setting. So I'm pretty excited. I can't wait to play it out and try, try it out. I'm most likely going to be streaming this. So check out my Twitch and uh, check out my other socials. Uh, down below and hopefully you guys enjoyed this video just talking about the new update. I'm excited yo Can't wait to you guys to play it and hopefully see you guys around in game or out later days